So we will stand up all together, raise our eyes up to the sky with faith and love in our hearts. And we will embark. Oh, oh, oh. We will be. Hello my fellow Latter-day Saints, Kenzie Boucher, the woman entertaining here, the most inspirational woman in all of Asia. Back today, it's two for Tuesdays and I'm going to try, I'm going to try my hand at uh, fantasy booking for the WWE. And to kick things off, uh, with it being two for Tuesdays, uh, it's going to be a two-parter. So, this two-parter, what could it possibly be? Well, I am going to try... Fantasy booking WrestleMania 34. In other words, how WWE should have booked WrestleMania 34. So, right, let's get myself a beverage because this is going to be fun. I am looking forward to seeing how this will play out because there were a lot of decisions that made. A, no sense, and B, just didn't work for, lo for long-term booking. So. Oh, that's refreshing. That is refreshing. So. Let's run through how they actually did it. I'm just going to go through the results and some of the key moments in each of those matches. Here we go. Right. Let's see. There was the pre-show. Uh, they had Matt Hardy win the uh, Battle Royale uh, by Lars Luminite and Baron Corbin with help from uh, Bray Wyatt, which for some reason didn't make any sense. Uh, Cedric Alexander beating uh, Mustafa Ali for the Cruiserweight Championship. Cruiserweight Championship on the pre-show after a 16-man tournament. Why? Just why? Uh, Naomi winning the Women's Battle Royale by last eliminating Bailey. A, the winner made no sense. And B, I'll get into that shortly. I'll get into I'll get into B shortly. Main show: Seth Rollins winning the Intercontinental Championship, which I'm happy with. I'm happy with that one. Uh, Charlotte Flair beating Asuka to retain the Women's Championship, and also with, uh, and also ending Asuka's undefeated streak. Mind you, we are in New Orleans after all. Which is a, uh, uh, Bludgeon Brothers. Hmm. The Bludgeon Brothers winning the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. Um, Jinder Mahal, good grief, why? Is he United States Champion? Uh, the mixed tag team match, uh, Kurt Angle and Ronda Rousey winning that one. Hardly surprising. Um, Undertaker in a squash match against John Cena, interestingly. Yeah. Uh, then we had... And then we had Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon beating Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Nia Jax beating Alexa Bliss in a match that was a lot longer than it sh should have been. And the build-up was just terrible. Uh, AJ Styles beating Nakamura with Nakamura turning heel. Braun Strowman with a, with, a, with a fan called Nicholas winning the Raw Tag Team Championships. Choice of partner made no sense there. And then Brock Lesnar beating Roman Reigns for the Universal Championship. Now, I'm obviously changing that one because it's Brock Lesnar. And I have no respect for what Brock Lesnar does in the ring whatsoever. I'm not saying he's a bad person away from the ring. It's just the booking decisions of what he does inside the ring that make no sense to me. Anyway. Uh... Hmm. 
Let's see. Hmm. Uh, and then there's the and then there's the cruiserweight championship tournament bracket. I'm going to take a gamble here, and I am going to change a couple of the things in that uh, in in the uh, cruiserweight championship tournament. I'm going to change a couple of things there. So, here we go. So, Vince McMahon, take note, because this is how you should have booked WrestleMania 34. Right, pre-show. Let's not change the outcome of the match. Let's let's keep Matt Hardy winning the Battle Royale. But not have any interference from Bray Wyatt at all. Because to me, that didn't make any sense. Another thing that didn't really make sense to me was the Women's Battle Royale. Now, two things. Obviously, the winner of the match made no sense. And then the... And then the name of the Battle Royale, it was just the WrestleMania Women's Battle Royale. Why? You could have easily renamed it the Mae Young Memorial Battle Royal. Which to me makes a lot more sense than A, this name, and B, the controversial decision to name it the Fabulous Moolah Memorial Battle Royal. Now, you... And this is why WWE don't like going into the history books and going through the bad things regarding wrestlers. They always like to trade... They always, they always like to... What's what I'm looking for? They always like to portray them in a positive light. Which is why what culture have a lot of these 10 things WWE wants you to forget about insert wrestler's name here. It just makes no sense whatsoever to have it being the Fabulous Moolah Battle Royale, given the controversy that she stirred up, that WWE being WWE, like to sweep under the rug, as if it didn't even happen. Now, if I was running a company like this, obviously I would address these issues, and I would make the appropriate adjustments. That's why the May Young Memorial Battle Royale makes a lot more sense. I mean, A, May Young's not, no longer here, rest in peace, but she was also a women's wrestler as well, on top of other things as well. So, keeping the entrance the same for the Battle Royale, but having Bailey and Sasha Banks be the last two competitors in the Battle Royal. That makes more sense than having Naomi tossed out but not actually eliminated. I would have I would have had Naomi eliminated by this point because she's already had a WrestleMania moment by winning the women's title at WrestleMania in her hometown last year. So I think so I think having Bailey and Sasha Banks as the final two makes more sense because of the animosity between them recently in the build-up to WrestleMania. And I would have them go at least 10 minutes just inside the ring, those two. No outside interference, just those two in the ring, 10 minutes. 
And that would have Sasha Banks come out on top. Now, why Sasha Banks? It's to help get that aggressive fighter out of Bailey, reminiscent of what she did in NXT in, in their rivalry. In for me, one of the best women's rivalries of all time. Bailey and Sasha Banks in NXT and their match of the year one of them one of their match of the year candidates at TakeOver Brooklyn back in 2015 and then following up following it up a few months later with their 30 minute Iron Man match at TakeOver Respect, which was a tribute to Dusty Rhodes. And I'm obviously not having the Cruiserweight Championship on the pre-show because the tournament was supposed to have the, the was supposed to culminate at WrestleMania, which it did, but not on the pre-show. I would I would have that on the main show and replace it with the Raw Women's Championship based on the build-up of that match. I swear on my life, the build up to the match between Nia Jax and Alexa Bliss. I swear on my life, it was like we were back in the Divas era of wrestling. Please, good grief, no. This is not how you're meant to do a women's revolution, Vince. This is not how you do a women's revolution. Bullying Nia Jax because she's big, or she's fat, or she's this, or that, or the next thing. Like I said, I swear we're back in, I swear we were back in the Divas era of wrestling. Feuds based on women being fat, or being bullied. It makes no sense. None whatsoever. Right. And instead of it going 10 minutes, I would have had Nia Jax squash Alexa Bliss. Like, like have a glorified squash match. Uh, reminiscent of John Cena and Lesnar at SummerSlam 2014. Just have Nia Jax toss Alexa Bliss out uh, around the ring like a rag doll. Alexa Bliss, no offense whatsoever. And then have, have her pin Bliss one foot on the chest. One, two, three. Nia Jax new Raw Women's Champion. Right. Main show now. Here we go. And I would have the Cruiserweights open the match. Why? Because it's the start of the show. The crowd's at full capacity. And here we go. All right. Uh, I'm going to make a couple of changes in the bracket. Uh, I'm not changing the competitors. I'm just going to change a couple of the outcomes. Uh, first round, uh, Cedric, TJP, Kalisto, Roderick Strong. Okay, that's fine. That makes sense. I would have had Akira Tozawa win instead of Mark Andrews. Uh, Drew Gulak... I actually preferred his old entrance theme. I prefer Drew Gulak's old entrance theme compared to the one he actually has now. Uh, Arya Devari, I would have him win instead of Buddy Murphy. And uh, Mustafa Ali, I would keep that one. I would keep that one the same. Mustafa! Mustafa! Musta, Musta, Mustafa! <laughs> Alright. And then from there, I would pretty much keep the rest of the bracket the same. Cedric, Roderick, Drew Gulak, Mustafa. I would have, I would, I would keep that pretty much the same, all the way up to the final. But instead of them going twelve minutes, I would have them go at least twenty minutes, and still have Cedric come out on top. 
get the fans excited, and boom, there you go. And you've got at least a four-star match on Dave, Mel on Dave Meltzer's rating system, of course. <laughs> Easily four stars. And then the rest of the... And then... Uh, next, have the Intercontinental Championship match, which, fine, yes, I'm happy with that. Uh, yeah, I'm happy with the outcome of that match, because... I mean, I mean, I mean, Seth Rollins, I mean, Grand Slam champion, good on him. So there we go, I'll keep that one the same, because uh, the match was actually pretty good. It, it, was, it was a good way to open up the actual show, but I think it's a great way to follow up on the Cruiserweight Championship match. Right, so that's five down, nine to go. Uh, next have the US title match which I feel should have gone at least 10 minutes it was short of, it was just short of 10 minutes but on one but the only thing I would change though is that Jinder Mahal never wins again Jinder Mahal not the champion because how they actually went about that one was the fact that Jinder Mahal won the title at WrestleMania only to lose it eight days later after being traded to Raw in the Superstar Shake-Up. Losing it to Jeff Hardy and then Jeff Hardy gets traded to SmackDown anyway. Why? Now, I mean, okay, fair enough. Jeff Hardy's a Grand Slam champion as well now, but Why? Why though? Why? It makes no sense. And then to make matters worse, just to stick it to the Rusev fans, Rusev took the pin. Because he's not supposed to be over, according to Vince anyway. So, based on that, I would actually switch those two around. I would have Rusev I would have Jinder take the pin, and then Rusev pins him, having Rusev become US Champion, huge pop from the crowd, and then, just for a bit of fun, because I hate Jinder Mahal, always have, always will, Orton, low blow, Rude, low blow, Rusev, low blow, they, they all low blow Jinder. And then just for good measure, Rusev lifts him up and not necessarily correct the he just goes boom! Get out of here! Go away! Never be seen again! And just to add further humiliation, have Jinder escorted to the back with the medical team. Never have him walk back to the back under his own power. Why? Because I hate Jinder Mahal and I like to humiliate him. Ha 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 ha! Right, uh, mixed tag team match now. Um, first off, I wouldn't have it as a, I wouldn't have it as a, um, I wouldn't have it as a mixed tag team match because I just want it to be between Ronda Rousey and Stephanie, so Ronda can kill McMahon. And again, I would have that be another glorified squash match. Uh, keep it at the 20 minute uh, time length. Do not have Triple H at ringside. Do not have Kurt Angle at ringside. Have them in their own match and have Kurt Angle come out on top by making Triple H tap out. So, I've, I've pretty, so there you go. I've just pretty much added another match onto the match card. Anyway... Ronda and Stephanie. I would have Ronda... I mean, obviously I would have Ronda Rousey come out on top. But give Stephanie McMahon no offence whatsoever. Absolutely none. Not even a slap to the face. Give her no offence. Break her left arm. Break her right arm. And then toss her out of the ring. I know that sounds like I'm being dark, but... That's how I'd do it. I would just have Ronda Rousey, no smiles, just 
The smiling shouldn't even be. I mean, the smile when she came. Smile when she came out. Fair enough. At the Royal Rumble. Fair enough. Fantastic. But if you want to portray her as the baddest woman on the planet, have her break Stephanie's arms. Have her break both arms. And that's, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Kerngle Triple H, eight. And there we go. So that's that. I would have, so there we go. That's, that's that. And I'll see you guys in uh, part two.